One thing we can definitely say for sure, and I did some, I actually kind of repeated some research on this before uh, we started this uh, today. Um, with the AMP1, you actually created, similar to another company that I very much have in my heart, which is uh, Two Notes, exactly, that's, <laughs> that's the one. Um, you pretty much created a, a new product category. I think yep. it's fairly it's fairly safe uh, to say that, and I'm I'm want I want to share one th one memory with you, and I'm and you tell me if you had the same impression when you came out with this. I thought the first thing people didn't understand it. That was the first thing people didn't understand what it was. It was like, okay, like a paddleboard amp, what? So first people didn't understand. <laughs> it. Then people understood it, but they didn't believe it. They were like. It's yeah. impossible that this small thing has 100 watts and can keep up with, like, you know, my Marshall head or my whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. Um, and once people understood it and believed it, because you showed them and other artists showed them that it was possible, and then you had some artists touring with it as well. Um, right, yeah. Yeah, and then at some point they were like, okay, this is great. And then people came around and actually started, you know, getting into the same sort of niche, same sort of category. That that's that's my memory of how the timeline of how the timeline line went. So how much time did it take you to convince people? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still doing it every day. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and it's just this I'm morning. Not I mean, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Let's let's do the treatment. No. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's all good. Um, j just this morning, I got another uh, message from uh, Jefferson uh, Starship guitar player, uh, the former one. Now there's Jude Gold, who is playing an amp one, mm -hmm. <laughs> and now he is playing this amp on. In the in the US on tour, we are not as well known in the US as we are over here, and you know, so I can see, so weird. The, yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's it, I get I get the message is like, man, Jude showed me the thing, and um, it, it's like brand new for them, and they're going totally excited because he has seen the results, you know, he has seen uh, three bands on on the big stage. And Jude playing the amp one, and the other guys had their big heads, and he had like the same or even better tone or whatever. And he he th this guy was watching the band that he was playing in and and thinking like unbelievable, you know. And then he <laughs> the, the guy come, th that plays the, the gig now comes up with this little box here, and uh, yeah, and now he's totally excited, you know. He writes with the email and like he played it, he feels it. He's a it, you know so but honestly that whole curve that you uh, that frank just described about convincing people i had with myself before mm. i created a product i mean i <laughs> I, okay. I you know I, I i wear two hats i am a guitar player and that is heavily biased by my taste for Vintage gear, Stratocasters, Marshall M's, Fender M's, the tradition uh, par excellence. You know, mm. I'm uh, um, for me, my life is split into the teens, where where I was dreaming about the music and David Gilmour and Richie Blackmore and another more and Gary Moore and <laughs> <laughs> more, more of these more. like okay there's a yeah. th there's there's like this this world of Marshall M's and and whatnot so this was a dream world in my head the next phase in my 20s I I became the fl freelance uh, demonstrator for Hughes and Kettner and uh, I I was um, working on very progressive uh, amplifier concepts um, having the experience that it does not sound good my first job was to demonstrate a programmable amplifier by using Kettner um, and I I played it 
and I came back and I said, hey guys, the concept is somehow great, but it sounds not like my Vox AC30 or my mm. Marshall or my Fender. So I took all my three amps there and uh, then I ended up in research and development for the next 27 years. <laughs> <laughs> nice. and, and my main my main job was kind of um, um, demonstrating the things, but also challenging uh, the R&D department. Hmm. I'm a technician myself, but not at the highest level. Uh, I can mod tube amps at, at a low level, which I have done. Marshall mods and my my Mesa Boogie has been modded when I was a teenager. But then I decided to become a guitar player and I sold all my electronic stuff. <laughs> uh, then I was in the R&D department having somebody to work with. So I was just the guy that was doing the challenges, knowing a little bit about the electronics and saying, you know, here is the problem. There's the problem. You find the solution for that and that. And then um, heavy fights, heavy fights. Mm. And then the result was in the end um, that I learned uh, the first 10 years tube amps are the best. And I built up my own collection about blackface uh, and marshals and another marshal and another pedal and all this holy grail gear, just like my 61 strap. And then over the Houston Kettner days, I learned we can get pretty far with alternative circuits, but there is still the last little gap between that and the real deal. Mm -hmm. So I was always about the real deal. Guys, give me the real deal because as a musician, I don't compromise. You know, whatever it takes, I would buy. It, I would buy it and use it. That's me. So, and when when I came to the point with using Kettner that we tried to do that flexible triamp with thirteen tubes and everything in the amp, I found that this was a solution, and still I was missing some things. Mm. Then I discovered that the old tube uh, direction has limits as well. I mean, I've been involved in modeling uh, around 2000 with uh, the Zentera, and I experienced the, 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 lim the, the benefits and the limitations of modeling. Mm. Then um, after the 2000s, um, we, we, or before that, we had the old tube um, triumph phase and all that stuff and in in between we had also some transistor projects with like more affordable um constructions the thing is um i discovered after being in all three technologies that the analog not 100 percent tube technology mm. is the one that gives me most Okay. Signal quality, signal quality, and like no side effects because no latency, no conversion, no bandwidth limitations. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no tube tolerance bullshit. Like you know, tubes have twenty, twenty five percent tolerance. How to build consistent MMs? I mean, if I have one magic old tube amp selecting my holy grail tubes uh, for that one particular amp i can get a great amp but the moment i try to replicate that amp yeah. i have to buy components and it's a it, it, it's a nightmare to get good components these days i mean it's possible but in the end such a tube amp has to be five thousand yeah, dollars if you yeah. want to go all the way yeah, and so true. that was a logical um, uh, uh, step in my head. Like there is my future and this is what I believe. Then being the musician, <laughs> you are on stage and then uh, having my first prototype of the M1 in the bigger box and stuff like that. It's like you go on stage and you, you play it. I was cheating. I had that tube end and behind the tube amp hidden nobody knew it i had a little plastic box with what later became the amp one mm -hmm. 
And I played that and it's like, is it real? Is it, it, is it actually working? And I found out, yes, it is. And then for my, this is my backup and project. I went uh, to let's make this my amp. This is why I called it the amp one and not my backup oh. amp or pedal amp. It's like amp one period. This is the one amp and this is, I'm serious about that. Mm -hmm. So even to myself and um, now years later, I have proven it works. And now I have other people that went through the same kind of phase. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is with my new, with my new toy, the amp X, I'm going through the same procedure now because, um, Oh, wow. Since, since the 1st of January uh, this year, I'm just playing this, not because there's something wrong with M1. Uh, no, it's just uh, I have to find all the software bugs and the things that I want to improve with this. So I live with this on every gig. I played, what is it, today is Monday, Saturday I played, no, uh, Friday night I played with this. And, um, you know, it's like you are on stage and you have everything programmed. And there's a few controls that I already have implemented, like my boost and my power drive, where this kind of is loading the front end. And this is kind of loading the, the power end. And I wish these would be functional already. They will be, but they are not. <laughs> And what, what I also was missing was kind of my master EQ that works over all the presets because what happened was I was playing in a, a place, uh, what is it, like a city town hall with a lot of glass, very harsh sound. I mean, like, uh, no, you know, I made the bass drum pretty big so we could stand a balance between the harsh rest of the band and filled up the, the lower frequency with the bass drum. So this was kind of, and you know, I, on my M1, my, 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 my fast treatment would, would have been very simple. I would have had a touch more bass and uh, a, a touch less treble, uh, just like that. Like, you know, reduce this and increase this, five seconds done mm. but i had to play the whole entire gig with the amp x not having this because okay. you have no time to go through all the presets and dial in everything perfect it it is all already on my uh, agenda on the wishes but it's not finished yet and this is um on the other hand i already played that amp and i know wow I have a few things that are even improved in the versatility, which I can use for my personal preferences. Now I have uh, recreated one of my 50 watt uh, marshals um, for my collection, which was my go-to amp for many years in the studio, even before using Ketner, you know, this mm. was fu funny. My, my stuff is old uh, and this, this, is is when I was seventeen or nineteen, even before anything, I had bought the best gear. Actually, uh, I was lucky. I had a good taste. I, I and I met the right people, and I I bought the nice. I, I bought good stuff. Yeah. So anyway, and this amp on on the amp X now gives me something that I was really enjoying that night. So. Mm. What I'm trying to say here is it's a process. So Frank says, okay, um, there's things in our heads like this cannot be true. People still go, it's like, yeah, and where's your amp? <laughs> it's like, yeah. this, it's called amp one. And there's a speaker out, there's a power in it, and there's a guitar in it. And this gives you 100 watts? Yes, it does. But it's, you know, how, how can it work? How can it, well, it does work and it's just because we are a little bit more innovative than the rest of the world, <laughs> but Hey, this is somebody has to, to, to do it 
I'm convinced and uh, I think this is not a good project for, for a company uh, that would simply create a product that they can easily sell mm. because that's my job to be there and, and teach the world there is an alternative uh, to lugging around 25 kilograms. I mean, I mean, I can do it like this, no, easily, and I can hold it like this for the for the rest of the interview. You know, do this with your tube amp. 